I think a good rule of thumb is any sort of uh, dangerous, defiant, or disruptive behaviors, but really generally any behavior that the parent thinks is unacceptable and that might tempt the parent to raise their voice is probably a good behavior for timeout. It's more about the condition that you're creating rather than the location. And so you want to choose a place where you're creating a major reduction in the child's access to all attention and to preferred activities. And so generally, you want it to be a situation where the child has nothing going on, nothing fun, nothing exciting, and there's really nothing they can do about it. So any attempts to access those resources are unsuccessful for the child. I like to use um, just a, a corner where they don't have access to anything, but where they're in my visual or auditory range. Um, oftentimes an adult sized chair is recommended so that you know if the child has two feet on the floor, that means that they've left time out and you need to address that. You know, this, this problem can be avoided by simply physically guiding them to time out rather than giving them the instruction to go. A lot of times giving that instruction sets the occasion for more defiance and non-compliance and the physical guidance eliminates that concern. The cardinal rule during timeout for uh, addressing problems, addressing misbehaviors, whether it be your child's leaving the timeout location or they're crying or they're screaming, is all adult responses should be nonverbal. So from the time you take your child to timeout until you indicate that timeout is over, you should say nothing. Exit from timeout, I would recommend having it be dependent on the child's behavior rather than the passage of time. So exiting from timeout and getting to leave timeout is usually a pretty rewarding and preferred activity for a kid. And so it has the power to strengthen the behavior that comes before it. So it's a good idea to allow the child to leave timeout once they're exhibiting more calm and composed behaviors so that they're learning how to self-calm and self-soothe. You know, I, I would say you could start doing this as early as probably around 12 months of age. Um, I have a 20 month old and she knows how to do timeout and we do timeouts regularly. I think you can do a modified version of timeout at a pretty young age for a child. Once they start moving around, then timeout is usually an appropriate disciplinary strategy. Mm -hmm.